Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a second year medical student. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about all things pass-fail medical schools. So should you go to a pass-fail medical school? Are they better than your traditional grading system? Should all medical schools be pass-fail? We're gonna be covering all of this stuff and much more in today's video. And so if you guys didn't know, I do offer pre-med advising. And one of the questions that I get a lot from pre-med students is should I go to a pass-fail medical school or should I go to a school that actually has a grading system? And so in order to answer this question, there's a few things that we kind of have to break down in order to kind of help you pick the right medical school to go to. So first off, what are some of the pros of going to a pass-fail medical school? I think the biggest pro that we all hear about is that the amount of stress that you guys are gonna feel during medical school is gonna be very limited at a pass-fail medical school because you're not gonna be worrying about the grades that you're getting as long as you're passing your classes you're gonna be doing just fine. And since we're on the topic of grades, let me just tell you guys, your grades in medical school only matter to a certain extent. As long as you guys can get a basic understanding of what's being taught, you guys are gonna be just fine as physicians. Now, getting great grades in medical school does not directly correlate with the type of physician you're gonna be or how you're gonna practice medicine. So I wouldn't really worry about trying to get 100% or an A on every single exam in medical school, it's not gonna happen um, unless you're a genius. I know there are a few people out there that are gunners, they are going to get A's and whatever, let's just let them do their own thing. But for the majority of us, myself included, we're just trying to survive medical school so that we can go into residency and actually start practicing medicine that actually interests us. And after talking to so many residents and so many physicians, they all tell me the same thing. As long as you guys can just do well in medical school and pass your classes, all of the learning that you're gonna be doing as a physician comes during your residency because that is the stuff that you actually need to retain. You need to know that stuff. Um, you are going to be a specialist in whatever your residency is in. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about your grades in medical school if you're at a pass-fail medical school. Now this is completely different if you're going to a medical school that does have the traditional grading system like the A, B, C, and F. But if you're just at a pass-fail medical school, pass your classes, do it as stress-free as possible, and you're gonna be just fine. Now, I know we were supposed to be talking about the pros of a pass-fail medical school, and honestly, guys, I think the only pro and the whole reason there are pass-fail medical schools is to really just to reduce the amount of stress that you guys have as medical students. Medical school is very stressful. There's a lot thrown at you at one time, and you don't need to be worrying about learning everything because like I just mentioned, you're not gonna be using it as a specialist in whatever field of medicine you go into. So those things are gonna be learned during your residency, so don't worry about memorizing every single detail in medical school. It's just pointless, you're not gonna use it, you're not gonna remember it, and that's why we have so many different types of specialties in medicine. Now, what are the cons of going to a Passville Medical School? I think the biggest con is probably the ranking system. So. If you're trying to go into a very specialized field of medicine like neurosurgery, maybe orthopedic surgery, dermatology, um, anything like very specialized pediatrics, like pediatric oncology, stuff like that, very specialized, um, very competitive in a sense, that's kind of where you wanna be ranked in medical school, especially if you're a very bright student. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword because if you're not like the brightest medical student, then the pass-fail system is gonna do you good because maybe you didn't get all A's in medical school, but you still wanna go into one of these very competitive specialties, but you just don't really have like the great ranking in medical school. But if you are one of those bright shining stars in medical school or gunners or whatever you wanna call them, then a traditional style medical school where they actually give you guys grades might be the best thing for you to do. So is the ranking system a pro or a con? It's kind of up to you. Like I said, it's a double-edged sword depending on the type of student you are and the type of specialty you really want to focus in on. But for me personally, I think a traditional style grading system is honestly a con for me because I am a very like average level student um, I'm not trying to stress myself out during medical school. I have a wife, I have a family, 
And, you know, I don't want to put all my attention on medical school when I know that I'm not going to be using the majority of that information in my future specialty as hopefully an emergency medicine physician. So since we're on the topic of ranking, I want to talk about how you're ranked at a pass-fail medical school. Now, I don't know if this is for every pass-fail medical school, but I know at least for my medical school, which is a pass-fail medical school, and I would say the majority of these schools, they use a quartile ranking system. So you're either going to be like the first quartile, the second, third, or fourth, or the top 25%, which is the same thing, just a different terminology, or top half of the class, or bottom half of the class. So you're going to see terms like that being thrown around at a pass-fail medical school. And so when your so-called grades are set to these residency programs, they're not going to see a letter grade. They're going to see the letter P for pass or the letter F for fail. Um, hopefully you pass all of your classes. And in fact, you have to pass all of your classes in order to keep advancing in your medical career. But that is a whole nother topic for another day. But these residency programs are going to see that you passed your classes and then it'll probably say this student was in the top half of their class. Another pro of going to a Passville Medical School is it really decreases the amount of competitiveness that is within your medical school class. Um, it doesn't completely eliminate it. There's always going to be those groups of people that are out for themselves that just want to get ahead of everyone else. And I feel like that sort of mentality starts in undergrad when we're all just trying to get into medical school. And those people really don't break that habit in medical school. But it is really nice going to a medical school where, you know, we're all just on the same level. We're all just trying to pass our classes. And yes, there is some sort of ranking system. But in all reality, that's going to have very little effect on the type of specialty you go into. And if you guys didn't know, Step 1 and Complex 1 are both pass-fail exams now. So those are your first set of board exams that you're going to take between your second and third year of medical school. They're both pass-fail now. And so you might be wondering, well, how am I going to really stand out if my grades are now pass-fail, my board scores are pass-fail, like what am I supposed to do to stand out if I want to go into something really competitive like cardiology, neurology, or surgery. And so where you're going to start being able to stand out is during your third and fourth year rotations. So you're going to need to get letters of recommendation from your preceptors. So those are going to carry so much weight now. So it's so important that you guys do extremely well during your rotations. And as a third year, you're not going to be really doing much. But like showing up on time is surprisingly something that medical students aren't very great at. But if you can just show up on time or even early to your rotations, start looking at the types of patients you're going to be seeing that day, kind of reviewing material, and just having an idea of what you're going to be seeing that day is going to actually go a very long way when it comes to presenting those patients to your preceptors, doing a good physical exam, getting a really good thorough history, so these are all little things that you're going to be doing as a third year student that are going to help really get you those good letters of evaluation. Now on top of your letters of evaluation, step two and COMLEX level two are both still scored exams. So those exams now have even more weight than step one and COMLEX one did when those were scored. So it's going to be so important that you guys do well on those exams as well as getting good letters of evaluation. So those are the two ways in which you guys are going to be able to stand out. Now on top of that stuff, it's so good to have extracurricular activities that you're doing. They don't have to be medically related. I know at least in the field of emergency medicine, one of the biggest questions that program directors ask you like in your residency interviews is what do you like to do for fun? Like what do you do outside of medicine? Because people want to work with people that have very similar interests, that have fun outside of work, that just aren't workaholics. And that varies from specialty to specialty. So definitely look into those little things that will really help you stand out. So we're getting a little bit off topic, so let's bring it back to pass-fail medical schools or your traditional style grading system medical schools. Now let's say you get into one of each. So if you're a blessed person and have the opportunity to choose which medical school you're going to, how are you going to choose between a pass-fail and a traditional style medical school. And honestly guys, for me, I would pick my medical school based on where I wanna live because 
if you're not happy where you're living, it's gonna reflect in your studying, it's gonna reflect in your grades, and it's gonna reflect your mental health. And so you wanna enjoy medical school. So pick a medical school where you're gonna enjoy yourself, your life, your family. You know, maybe a medical school closer to home is better than going across the country because you wanna to go to a super prestigious school. So you have to kind of consider all of these different variables. So in all reality, does the pass-fail system really do much for you? Honestly, it, it does and it doesn't because you still are getting grades. So don't get me wrong, you guys are still gonna get grades on your exams whether it's an 83% or a 59% or whatever, you're gonna see an actual grade. And on Canvas or whatever site your school uses, you're gonna have a final grade in that class. And there has to be some way to determine what is passing. And for most schools, that's 70%. So you still are being graded at pass-fail medical schools. Those grades just aren't published on your transcripts. So are you being graded at a pass-fail medical school? Absolutely. So what's really different about passing classes at a pass-fail school versus at a school that actually publishes your grades? At both schools, you have to pass your classes. So like I said, if you don't want your grades being shown, to a residency program, then a pass-fail school is gonna be for you. But if you don't mind residency programs seeing your grades, then maybe choose a traditional style school. But when it comes down to it, it's kind of all semantics. It's just kind of how you guys look at it. And so that's why I say when choosing a medical school, don't just choose it based on pass-fail. Choose it based on the type of school, their board scores, their the location of the school, the surroundings of the school, the types of resources the schools have. And most importantly, talk to students that go to that school or that went to that school recently and see what their experience was like because you don't wanna to go to a school that promises you all these different things and then you go there and find out that you're miserable. So guys, I think we really covered as much as we can about pass-fail medical schools and if they're right for you. If you ask me personally, I think there's more pros to going to a pass-fail medical school than cons. And I think most medical schools are moving into that pass-fail type of curriculum. And so, you know, by the time you guys watch this video, who knows, maybe every medical school will be pass-fail. But if you guys have any additional questions, drop them down in the comments below. If you want to set up an advising session with me, come chat with me on Facebook. My Facebook page is called Med School Mentor. You can book a consult with me. We can talk about your own situation and figure out what's the best school for you or whatever situation you guys are in, whether you're a pre-med student, a medical student, whether you're trying to take boards or whatever the case may be, we can figure it out for you. So come hit me up on Facebook, Med School Mentor, and we'll get you back on track. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a like, subscribe to my channel because it really helps my channel grow, helps my videos reach more pre-meds, more medical students, and just more people overall, and it's free for you guys, so just click on that button, and I hope to see you guys in my next video.